Hello again, my name is David Watts from Lenovo Press, and I have with me today Russ Resnick. He is the Worldwide Segment Manager for One and Two Socket Rack Servers. How are you doing, Russ? Pretty good. How are you, David? Very good. Thanks so today, for having me. Yep. Today we're going to be talking about the new Think System SR590. This is our new two socket rack server. Um, to you rack server. To you rack server, mm -hmm. yep. Part of our Think System line. Now, Russ, we already have the Think System SR650. That's correct. Um, how does this one compare to that? So this server is really for customers who don't need all the bells and whistles of the SR650, but still want a lot of the features. So this, this uh, server supports a few less uh, memory dims, but also supports things like NVMe and doesn't support the full set of Xeon scalable processors. And the 650 supports GPUs as well. Yes. So that's another thing that's available for that high-end system. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so um, in this video, we're going to uh, take you through the components of it. Um, let's start with the front. Sure. And glue the back and then go inside. Yeah? Sure. All right. Mm -hmm. So at the front of this system, you see this uh, uh, bezel here. This is our security bezel. That's correct. Right? Um, and it, 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 its purpose is to simply protect uh, the drives, drives from, being from removed. physical access, yeah, mm -hmm. from being removed. And it has a, a key, of course. Um, the key is, is stored here um, when, you, when you buy the, um, the bezel. But of course, you take that away once you lock the lock the the, uh, uh, the enclosure, the uh, um, bezel. Right. Yep. When, mm -hmm. So this this uh, version of the SR590 uh, has uh, 12 three and a half inch drives. We can right. support eight three and a half inch drives. Yep. And they can be simple swap SATA, mm -hmm. or in this uh, configuration, there's actually 12 three and a half inch drives. Uh, all 12 bays are SAS SATA, and four of the bays are what we call any bay, which means they also support NVMe drives. Right, yep. So this one, if I see this I drive... one right there, yeah. Yes, this is actually one of the NVMe drives we, we offer. Um, ne never mind the uh, handwriting on, on, the, on the label. Um, so yes, the, the purpose here is you can have a mix of the high-capacity 12 terabyte right. um, drives, mm -hmm. three and a half inch form factor, uh, in addition to NVMe, which is high performance, right. low latency, high IOPS. Um, why would you want to do that? So there's several workloads that um, <clears throat> require a caching layer or a logging layer that needs to be high performance, and at the same time need a lot of capacity. Right. So this, this uh, server provides a good mix of high capacity and high performance drives yeah, for those okay. workloads. Yeah. Okay, so Russ, what are the, what are the connectors on that side? <clears throat> so on this side we have uh, the usual uh, server uh, uh, buttons and indicators as well as two USB ports. One of the USB ports has a wrench which means that uh, it can connect to the XClarity controller right. and using the <laughs> XClarity mobile app on your phone or tablet you can uh, talk to the XClarity controller using the app which allows for uh, more easy access to uh, server uh, changes and functions. Yeah, so this is for, for local systems management. You'd, you'd, you'd physically walk up to the machine with your tablet or your phone and use a USB tethering cable, right. USB cable, mm -hmm. to tether directly to the server. And you can use then your phone with the XClarity mobile app installed to do local diagnostics. Right. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that you use a tether, a cable, so you know that you're actually talking right. to the server <clears throat> that you mean to. Yeah. Now, there's a USB 2 um, for that, that port and the USB 3. For the, the system port. For the system mm -hmm. port, yeah. Now, on this side, is a, a VGA port. The, the, the front-mounted VGA port is an optional feature. That's right. Um, you can either get it with the server or you can do a field upgrade afterwards if you want. Mm -hmm. um, or not at all, if you prefer. That's right. Yeah. And, of course, there's a VGA port at the back, too. We'll show you that in a second. So that's the front. The front. Now, as well as the 3.5-inch <coughs> drives, the server can also be configured with 2.5-inch, right? Right. We support 8 or 16 2.5-inch drives, four of which can be NVMe. Right. Yeah. Or, if you prefer, no drives at all. That's right. Yeah. Okay, let's um, spin it around and look at the back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the back of the server, usual uh, ports and, and connectors. Let's go through each of those. Um, on this side is the um, Ethernet ports. Uh, there are two gigabit ports standard. On, on the, the server. motherboard, that's yep, correct. There's mm -hmm. one gigabit mm -hmm. ports, one and two. Um, there is an additional LOM adapter slot here. Right, which can be either two ports of one or two uh, ports of 10 gig. And those 10 gig ones can be either the RJ45 or, or the SP Plus, yep. right. Mm -hmm. Um, so a total of four Ethernet ports. There's also a fifth one, which is this one here. This one's the dedicated systems management connector. Right, to the XClarity controller. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do um, systems management, uh, remote systems management, you would use this port here. That's right. Yeah. These are the two gigabit ports. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, standard rear VGA port mm -hmm. for video. Um, over here is a is two um, USB three connectors and a uh, NMI reset button. That's right. Tucked away in there. And Russ, over there, two two power supplies. Yeah, two hot swap power supplies, either uh, 750 or 550 watt. And the 750s mm -hmm. can be platinum or titanium. That's right. Uh, efficiency mm -hmm. levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, now, there is, once we open, open up, we'll show you the different slot configurations, but you can see that there are up to six PCIe slots in this system. Um, in addition, there is the LOM slot, and then inside we'll show you there's an M.2 slot as well. That's right. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, send it back and open it up. Just like all our servers, very easy to open the cover and gain access to the internal components. All right, uh, let me remove the uh, air baffle. Okay, so this server is based on the Intel Xeon, Xeon scalable processor. Scalable family processors. Mm -hmm. um, this one only has one processor installed, uh, but the system supports up to two. Um, and we have uh, six DIMMs installed that the server supports up to 16. That's correct. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and if you have, for example, the 64 gig uh, LR DIMMs, then the server supports up to a terabyte of RAM in there. And, and, and why would you use 16 DIMMs um, <coughs> rather than the 12 DIMMs um, in other things, in other things system servers? Well, you know, a lot of customers uh, have uh, Xeon E5 proce mm -hmm. uh, processor-based uh, servers, and those had uh, 16 DIMMs. So this is a much easier transition uh, for their workloads and for their configurations to move from 16 DIMMs so to, to another to, 16 DIMMs. So to be DIMs. consistent with your memory footprint, mm -hmm. then this server can help you out there. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, so that's the memory and processors. Now let's look at the other components. The, uh, let's look at the PCI section first. Um, what we have here, the slots are mounted either in two riser cards or there is one slot um, that is using the onboard slot that's directly onto the motherboard. This one has the RAID card installed that's using, used to drive the, the SAS SATA um, uh, hot swap drives at the front of the server. Um, if I was to remove, the, the, remove this one here to show you, this is one of the riser cards. Uh, the, this is the riser card 2 area, and it has a, uh, a by 8 or a by, and, and a by 16 slot. Um, one key note, the by 16 slot, which is the top one, that's um, a slot 5, um, requires the second processor to be installed. That's All right. the rest of them <coughs> um, will operate with only one processor, right. but, mm -hmm. but slot 5 does require the second one. And here we have a dual M.2 uh, adapter. This is a rated M.2 adapter yes. for boot. Now, why would you use M.2, Russ? Well, it's a much more uh, reliable and compact form factor than using, say, a two and a half inch SSD uh, drive for so boot. So you use it for, for boot purposes, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, we have, you, you've got one over there, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the, it's, it's called the dual M.2 adapter because there are two M.2 drives on, on the unit, on the adapter, right. one on either side. Right, and a hardware RAID adapter on the right. adapter. Right, right. There is also a single M.2 adapter, which just has space for one, mm -hmm. um, one M.2 drive. And a variety of capacities available for the system as that's well. That's right. Yeah, all right. So that's, that's tucked away, hiding in there. Um, there's a second uh, riser slot here, and that has a, you've got a variety of configuration choices. You can get three by eight slots in this one, or um, three, uh, two by eights and a by eight ML2 adapter slot if you wanted, or a by eight and a by 16. So some all choices available for the for riser slot one. Right, and over here we have the uh, the uh, motherboard uh, LAN adapter. Right, that's the LOM the LOM <coughs> adapter. Yes, this one is the I think this one's the one gig. Mm -hmm. Two port, two adapter. port, one gig. But as you mentioned before, there's, there's also ten mm -hmm. gig options available right. as well. Yeah. So moving around the board, we also have this uh, plug-in module for our customers in China, where they can get the uh, TCM or the Chinese-based uh, encryption module, and that right. plugs the into one of the system has slots. TPM on board. On board, right? So right. It's TPM 2.0. Um, mm -hmm. If you need that, le that level of uh, right. of security right. in, in your system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Moving around on the board, we also have the LEDs here for the light path diagnostics. Yes. Yes. So th there are light path diagnostics uh, LEDs on the major components like processors and memory, right. and they, that works in concert with the the uh, error LED on the front. So if there is, for example, a memory fault, then the um, LED will light up in the front, and once you remove the server, you can then activate the uh, light path diagnostic system, and it will light up just the LED yeah. for that failed component. That's right. So it's a very easy way mm -hmm. to find out exactly which component is right. failed. Quickly replace that. 
And you're back in action. Very right. Quickly. And over here we have the SATA connectors. So if you build a configuration with just merely uh, SATA drives, they would plug in here. Yes. So once again, this server is very flexible in that you can build a server that has nothing but SATA drives, or you could build a server that has a mix of NVMe so and you, SAS drives. So you'd use these for the simple swap eight drives. Bay, Correct. Um, mm -hmm. um, simple configuration. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, now the RAID card. Uh, this RAID card here, um, I believe, is a 930, uh, supports a supercapacitor, and the supercapacitor actually is installed um, in, the, in the bezel to maximize airflow yeah, for Yeah, in the baffle here. Yeah. And, and, and it would go like this. But uh, the, also, we can store up to three of them because there may be some configurations with two and a half inch drives where you would want multiple RAID controllers. Yeah, or external, external RAID adapters too. Right, so this way we can store multiple of these super caps. And since mm -hmm. they're towards the front of the server, they're uh, well managed thermally. Yeah. I'd also point out that these, these connectors here, these are the NVMe connectors. Correct. So for the, the four AnyBay drive bays at the front, these are the connectors that will drive the PCI lanes um, from those drives into the system. That's right. Yep. Okay, um, also point out that this system has hot swap fans. When you have one processor installed, then you would have three fans. And with two processors installed, you have the four, four hot swap fans. The hot swap is simply, uh, the mechanism is to push this forward, and then it, then it, it slides out. Very easy to replace right. if it's a failed component. And then just push it back in again, locks in place. Very, 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 very easy to use, yeah. very simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's about it, Russ. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're looking for more information about this server, you can look at the, the product guide. We have a product guide for the SR590. That's and right. And there's also a 3D tour, which is a very handy interactive web interface that allows you to rotate the server and open up components. And it will provide you additional information about what you see on screen. You right. can zoom in and do all sorts of fancy stuff with it. Yes. That's very handy as well. And I'll provide the links to both of those in the bottom of the, um, in, in the description for the video. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And don't forget, all this is available at LenovoPress.com. Yeah. So now, I'd also say, we, we, we recorded this video today in the um, Lenovo Executive Briefing, Briefing Center. Center here in Morrisville, North yeah. Carolina, and we invite you uh, to uh, talk to your Lenovo sales rep about getting a, a visit here to the Briefing Center uh, where you can learn about the entire product line. Uh, you can speak with our product experts, developers. We have a lot of developers in this location. Right. right? Yep, mm -hmm. This is our, our main campus. And uh, it, it's a really a great way to become familiar with uh, what Lenovo can do for yeah. you. So if you're looking for to set up some time to visit the EBC and the mm -hmm. experts here, yeah. then just talk to your, to your local sales rep. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. All right. So this is the Lenovo Think System SR590. Russ, thanks very much. Thank you. Hope you found the video useful, and we will see you later. Bye.